Chuck. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Red Cat Live. Uh, we appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out with us today. We got a really good show in store for you guys uh, today. We definitely want to highlight uh, some cool stuff uh, that you guys haven't seen us do yet. Uh, on today's episode, I want to definitely cover how to make your '64 converted from a hardtop to a convertible. So, on today's episode, uh, that'll be the uh, the agenda. So. Why, right? The question, why would anyone want to hack up a perfectly great-looking car and make it a convertible? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, a lot of the reasons why someone would want to do so would be for the aesthetics, the look, right? Um, some people want a convertible. Maybe they might have had a convertible in the past, and that is the look that they want. And that was one amazing attribute that us here at Red Cat Racing were able to do, right? Start with the hard top. Because we knew a lot of you guys out there in the community were going to want to convert it into a convertible. We've already seen a lot of amazing people uh, do things such as cutting open the trunk, uh, cutting open the hood, uh, making all kinds of cool little strives to make your car unique to you. So I figured, why not kind of go over the how-to to do so? So, again, thank you guys for showing up. Um, if you guys can hear me loud and clear... Let me know in the comments. I'm watching on my phone so I can try to catch as many uh, questions as we go along. Uh, things that you guys will need uh, for today's episode moving forward and wanting to do uh, the modifications would be a nice, new, sharp X-Acto knife and some Lexan scissors. Um, and if you guys have suggestions on things that you guys want to see me highlight and do as well, don't be afraid to, you know, chime in and drop those, you know, recommendations out for me. I definitely want to make sure that we get you guys taken care of and that we offer you guys uh, a good amount of cool stuff to do that will hopefully make your car unique to you and, you know, enjoyable. So, uh, man, much love, Marlon, uh, Clifford Schultz, uh, much love, Jeff Ramos. Thank you, brother. Uh, Rich Campbell. Thank you guys for showing up as well. Um, I get it. The Cadillac body. Yeah. I mean, it'd be dope. It'd be dope to see some more bodies in the future. And, uh, we have a lot of things in the works, so you never know. It's a great suggestion. We'll put it in the hat, you know? Um, what's good. El Loco Melendez, man. What's good, brother, man? Uh, Matthew Savago. When is the mini truck? You know what? I don't know. Um, hope I've seen, I've seen some folks in the page create a create one uh, working on 3d printing one um so i'm kind of excited to see what kind of stuff we're going to start seeing in the future uh are we going to see someone make a bed dancer is that the next step right so hey you know keep track of that luke claxton what's up brother man hope you're having a good day as well so guys again thank you guys for showing up hanging out with me today um without further ado you know let's kind of get into it um as you guys know the Original body will look a lot like this right here, right? You guys can see we have a complete roof on it. It is a Lexan piece all the way around. Uh, the body itself um, will be a five-piece body. Um, so a lot of the times when the folks that I've been noticing that are putting these bodies together, um, they can't grasp just how many pieces come in this body it's pretty crazy it's an intricate body to build for me it definitely was probably the most intricate lexan body that i've built so far so um let's see shout out to kyle Parrish, man what's good brother man uh i would like to see some old pickup truck bodies that would be cool as well you know we'll definitely again add that to the hat of suggestions man we love hearing the feedback from the community it really is amazing um Man, I'm all about that low, low life, you know, so we took a little bit of a break last week from the norm. Uh, this week, we're going to do it a little bit different and have a little bit of fun um, hacking up a body. So as people are getting settled and people are showing up, we'll go ahead and do so uh, and get the body started. And I'll change over to another screen so that you guys can um, see the actual happening. So again, um, sharp X-Acto knife is a must and some Lexan scissors goes a long way. So we're going to move. My bad boy out of the way. Got to push it out of the way. Urgh, I need a hand. So <laughs> that bad boy will go over there. Um, I'm going to swap mics really quick. But before we do so, I want to just kind of point out a couple things that you guys should know about uh, when cutting the body. Because the body is a five-piece body set, um, the section that we are cutting out will be 
the top portion. Uh, with that said, you do weaken a little bit of the body itself. My recommendation is if you were to do this modification um, and keep the original interior, um, I would suggest uh, double sticky taping the interior to the actual body itself. It just makes it a lot easier and it gives the body a little more rigidity um, to stiffen it up a little bit. So food for thought. RC Patina guy, what's up, brother, man? Hope you're having a good one. Uh, Shad Mansing, what's good? Um, I would, uh, let's see. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, so with that said, cutting the body along the top lines down around the sides um, is not going to make any of the rest of the body fall apart. Uh, but it is the center section of the body itself. So keep in mind that when you do this, um, you definitely want to take your time, go slow. Um, this is one of those situations where you want to kind of hang out in front of the TV maybe and just take your time making your lines. So um, I'm just hopeful that I can get this all done within the hour. I'm pretty sure I can. Um, Unfortunately, uh, DeSav, we're not selling any modified 64s. All of our 64s will come literally as they come out of the box. We like to give everyone that option to have that stalker, stock car feel to their car and allow you, the community member, to modify it and uh, make it uh, your own and unique way. So um, with that said, yeah, I mean, it would be kind of cool to add some, but hopefully we can add some more parts that helps you Make it what you want it to be. So, uh, much love. Um, Eddie Kramer, man. What's good, brother? So, all right. Let's get to it, guys. Let's jump right in. Um, I'm going to swap mics. I'm going to move this mic out of the way, and uh, we'll get started. All right. Can you guys still hear me nice and clear? I'm wearing a lapel mic, so the audio is a little bit different. I do apologize for that ahead of time. Um. All right, so here we go. So as you guys, as you guys can see, uh, the body itself is still a hard top. Um, my recommendation when you want to start cutting up a body is to keep an eye on wanting to cut right above the chrome line. So when you start to cut and score, you don't want to be underneath the chrome. You want to be on top of the chrome. This will allow you to remove the actual painted surface and leave your chrome edges around your window trim. That same situation will apply as you score down the sides. On this one right here, I am going to leave the windows um, for now. And uh, you know, if whatever we choose to do with this body, once I make it a convertible, um, if we want to cut out the windows, then we can cut out the windows as well. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on the actual top itself. Um, so. Yes, Matthew, it does kind of hurt to see, but trust me, when you want your car, and a lot of folks are fans of convertibles, you want that look, right? Um, so, as you guys can see here, I went ahead and I actually cut right above the chrome line itself, all the way around it. And I did the exact same thing on the sides as well. When you get to this section right here, as you're scoring up, I did follow the contour of the trim itself to make sure that it matched. And you can see the chrome strip is still on the top of the windshield as well. So, all right, here we go. So again, as I mentioned before, a good X-Acto knife goes a long way. Lexan scissors for those really tight corners goes a long way in helping kind of create that clean cut. So. Without further ado, let's do it, guys. All right, so as I mentioned before, you definitely want to cut above the chrome strip. Let me see if I can get a better angle there. Not underneath it. So with your X-Acto knife, and if you have a good one like these, which I really like, you can get them on Amazon. They usually come in a two or three pack with about 100 blades. Um, they do carry a lock on there. Make sure you keep it locked. Save your fingers. You want to keep them. They're important. This definitely would not be something I would allow a child to do, guys. So keep that in mind when you are doing these with the kids or something like that. You definitely want to make sure that you stress, um, you know, adult supervision in this situation. We don't want anyone missing any limbs or fingers. So here we go. I start by just gently, this one here, 
just scoring right above the chrome line. And it's a little harder to hold at, on the table, but as you score it, I just follow the line all the way. And I like to do nice, solid passes. And if you're using a nice, sharp blade, and it's okay if you go above, because again, it's all going to come off. So again, just follow the chrome line. Follow it, follow it, follow it. And as I, meant, as I was mentioning, if you're using a nice, sharp blade, uh, the scoring will be so much better. So literally, you're just tracing the line. And as you trace, and you go, I've scored the top. I'll continue scoring it again, because you want to make a couple different passes to make sure that, uh, there we go. You want to make sure you get as many passes as you can in doing this. So the more passes you make on it, following your exact contour line, uh, the deeper that cut's going to be. And then I'll show you guys a little trick that I love to do with Lexan that always helps. So one more line, keep going. And literally guys, as I'm, as I'm doing this, the line is getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And you just want to take your time with it. There's no rush. Throw on your favorite TV show. You guys watch Street Outlaws? Watch Street Outlaws, you know? Anything of that nature. Yes, Aaron, great point. Um, before I started this, I snapped off one of the old uh, tips to expose a fresh, sharp tip. So again, you know, throw on your favorite movie. Throw on, uh, you know, the baseball game, whatever it is that you guys do, and then just keep scoring your lines. Take your time, it's not a race. And of course, I'm in a, in a studio room right now, and the room is a little bit warm. So my hands are starting to sweat a little bit because I'm also nervous being on camera with you guys, so I do apologize. Um, hey, at least I can admit it, you know what I'm saying? So as you as you guys are doing that, and you guys keep scoring it, and keep scoring it, keep scoring it, there's gonna be a time where the actual plastic is gonna be pliable, and you'll literally be able to just massage it and snap. Um, before we do that though, I will just start following the rest of the lines. It's just a playing a game of tracing. What do you guys like to do to your guys' cars these days? I see a lot of you guys doing a lot of cool stuff. What is, uh, you guys got pipe dreams? Is there anything that you guys want to do to your car that you guys just haven't gotten there yet? I love that, Kyle. Listens to music. Yeah, man. Play some tunes and just kind of get lost with it, you know? I'm going to put this right here, guys, so I can read it. There we go. Perfect. All right. And again, same thing happens here, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and score it. Just follow that chrome strip. If you want to, you don't have to do the full line. You know what I mean? You don't have to go from point A to point B. I like to as much as possible because your lines are just going to be that much cleaner. And see, I'm just scoring it over and over again. It is kind of a painstaking process. So that. Let's work on the back section here.
I want to make sure you guys can see. And, you know, if you guys' lines aren't the cleanest, mine, I mean, I have good days and I have bad days like anyone else. It just depends on how much coffee I had that day. Um, there's a lot of times where I'm doing this and my lines just aren't perfect. And I just wasn't feeling it that day. And it's okay. As long as you stay above the chrome piece, you can always come back to it and, with a little sandpaper and clean up the edges as needed. When are we going to have a good deal on a brushless window go? That's a great question. Not, unfortunately, not my forte. Um, not something I have uh, a say in. Uh, but, you know, I'll definitely let the powers that be know what's up. You guys can see I'm now working on the back half. Again, just take your time, guys. And you see I'm doing increments of about two to three inches at a time. And as you go and you wear it out at some given point, or sorry, as, as you go and you score more and more, um, the plastic will get thinner and thinner, and at some point you will end up cutting into it. Or cutting through it, I should say. like that see so now the blade went in which is what we wanted uh, from scoring and scoring and scoring now that it's in I know that I have a protrusion right there and then I can start working on stretching the, the Lexan to start manipulating it uh, so it's just process of elimination just keep at it keep going into it keep scoring it's gonna weaken it and weaken it and weaken it Yeah, um, just have, you know, it would be cool to already have one that's already pre-made. Um, but obviously, you know, for a, from a manufacturing standpoint, it's easier to make a body in a mass production format and allow the end user to do what they want with it. Unfortunately, rather than just sell two different bodies that we're going to have inventory of them just sitting around. All right. You guys can see it's just literally it's nothing, guys. You know, a lot of a lot of you guys are nervous. A lot of you guys are new, you know, and kind of look at this as like, wow, that's kind of crazy. How do they do that? And it really is is nothing, guys. It's take your time and have fun with it, you know. What are you guys' favorite color options out there? You guys have a favorite color you guys like to, to use by chance? If you guys could pick one color that you guys love the most on a lowrider, what would that be? Would that be a customized paint job or would that be a full on, you know, uh, single color candy maybe? Yeah, I see between the guy, right? Green, green. Hey, mean green. Black cherry. Yes. And, and again, guys, let the blade work for you. You know, you don't have to sit there and treat it like a, a sawzall. You know, let the blade work for you. Let it do its thing. That's what it's there for. And the great thing about them is they're cheap enough that you can just snap it off and, you know, keep at it. So. All right, so I know we're through here. Once you kind of get it started, you know, I can maybe extend the blade a little bit more. So now I have a little bit longer blade. And now I can actually get a little bit of a, of a stroke to the blade itself and just follow the line that you already made. Remember to put the blade back in as needed so you don't end up breaking one and cutting yourself.
Just work it and work it. Nothing to it. So the more you work it, hopefully you guys can see it here. Ooh, where am I at? There we go. Sorry, guys. You can kind of see, let's see if I can push. There we go. Sorry, guys. You guys can see that. Oops, there we go. Let me see. You're pushing it, and it's already separated right there. Pearl white with the purple top. Dude, I'm digging that for sure. Um, when you guys get to this little section back here on, on doing it, you just it's a little bit of a like a hump, right? Which is like the window channel. Uh, same thing. Just work it. Don't worry about it. See, I'm just lightly scoring it. I'm not even putting a lot of pressure on it. Um, that was RC Patina guy, Travis, that did the uh, love machine. Sorry guys, my hands are so sweaty right now. All right. All right, steady, slow and steady. Just following that line. Obviously right now I'm using a little bit of force. And now that that channel's going, if you go slow, that blade will just follow that same exact line you did. If you go fast, odds are you're going to create a secondary cut. And you want to avoid doing that while well, possible. And I actually did that right there speaking of, so. So again, you know, just kind of going with it, guys. Uh, you guys out there that own 64s, man, how are you guys loving yours, bro? I'm actually personally trying to uh, set up uh, an opportunity to uh, get a candy and chrome paint job on mine. That would be my ideal situation in life. I'm thinking something like a silver and black paint scheme would be great. Thank you. Bro. <laughs> Shout out to our amazing team for helping me out with that because, man, it's funny. When you're not on camera, uh, this doesn't seem as harder. But when you're on camera, everything obviously gets a little bit more difficult. And I got these hot lights on me. And then on top of that, I want to make sure that I have an angle so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm holding it in an awkward position. Normally I have this thing sitting on my lap. Yeah, it's a great one, Water see Patina guy. Using your pinky to spread it to help control the blade is huge. helps add support Who else is uh, working on their car these days? So as you guys can see, now that I have the protrusion going through because it's thinning out, I can literally just work my blade. And if you need to, add a little bit more. 
Will we make 13s for the 64? Um, you know, there's no plan at this exact time given uh, for 13s. Um, but you, know, you never know. Um, we're always keeping our ears open and we, we want to make sure that we offer some good stuff to folks and uh, you just never know what we might come up with next. So now you guys can see the it's starting to separate. There's a, a gap. Hopefully you guys can see it right. Where is it? Right, right there. Matthew's getting ready with a ton of upgrades. It says BE6S. Okay, see you, bro. See you. All right, so now that I have that opening started here, I'm going to go ahead and swap the blade around, and then we're going to start working it the other way. Again, if you're using a nice, sharp blade, at this point, it should really just go super easy for you guys. I usually like to remove the blade, and then as I insert it, I slide it forward, following that same contour line. Not rocket science by any means, guys. And of course, your blade's gonna get stuck in there and it happens, just work it out, no big deal. Just bought a 64 ready to start making modern. Heck yeah, Bob, man, enjoy that, brother. That's what I love to see. I love to see the pictures that you guys post every week. It's always awesome. My hands keep sweating so bad. Thank you. And then guys as well, sometimes it's good to have different styles. Uh, this blade right here that you guys see here is a fixed one uh, that literally hopefully focuses. Um, that threads on and it has a little bit bigger, bigger handle itself. So we'll try this one as well. So having a, a good set of exacto uh, knives goes a long, long way, guys. So there's going to be certain spots that I noticed that when you start snapping it, um, that you end up using the scissors to kind of get around little edges. Um, so these also come in handy. The reason why I'm not just using these right now to cut these lines is because I want a nice, smooth line. Uh, sometimes while using scissors, you can get a smooth line, but you kind of tend to get a little bit of a wave effect on the cut, uh, which you can usually get rid of with a little bit of sandpaper and a, a piece of wood or block. Um, so now that the back is completely open, the back half is in essence almost done, we're gonna concentrate on the back two contours so that those match, or that th those start to cut open. And again, same thing happens here, guys. We're just going to follow the chrome, and you get it. So, as I mentioned, this section right here, I already have started, and now you guys can see there should be a hole right there as well. Make sure the guys that you guys do not have your fingers underneath the body like this when you guys are cutting because you guys are going to get that blade right into your hand. Hey, much love Stacy Gunn. I really appreciate that. You know, uh, we love doing these episodes. It's definitely kind of a new thing for us to do, and uh, we appreciate the support. When you guys get to that little chrome hump right there, if you get the blade so that it's flat, you just treat it like a, like a little bit of a saw, and just go side to side a little bit on it. 
weaken it, and then you guys can cut it. And you guys can see now we're starting to get some separation happening there. So now we'll work on the back half, or the other half, sorry. Same thing like I mentioned, you get to the little hump section, just go back and forth with your nice sharp blade, work the blade down at an angle, and cut into it. That simple. So obviously, if you guys are here, you guys enjoy the lowriders. Um, what other type of RCing do you guys do? Are you guys bashers out there? Do you guys like to drag race? Are there any no prep guys out there? What's 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 the scene like in your area? In fact, if you guys can do me a favor, why don't you guys drop me a little uh, comment letting me know where you're from, city and state. I'm interested. I'm, I always love seeing that when I check the messages in the morning. Like I'm from Hawaii. I'm from Ohio. That's really cool to see. Man, much love, Richie. Richie saved the day by bringing me a different X-Acto knife, which always helps. So, as you guys can see, I'm just, again, just lightly scoring over and over again. Now that that's cutting through, let me see. Crawlers, Newcastle, and... South Wales, Australia. Oh, that is awesome, Michael. Thank you. Denver, Colorado, Los Angeles, Norfolk. What? Oh, I love it. I love it, man. I love the comments, guys. I really do. You guys are awesome. And don't be afraid when you push in on this, guys. If you start to notice a body separating, it's just double sticky tape. It's servo tape. It holds the panels in place. So don't worry about that. You can always re-stick them back on if you start getting a little separation. Kentucky. My first RC. Wow, Jose, that's awesome, bro. His first RC at 33 was a 64. I love it, man. I love it. Pittsburgh, California, P-Town. Ah, oh, I know all about Pittsburgh. That's my old stomping ground. Much love, Jeffrey. Man, I, I wish I could go out there, man. I, little J sounds so good right about now. A little steak sandwich. San Jose, Quebec, Canada. New Hampshire. Man, I love it. I love it, guys. Keep them coming. Because, see, although this is for you guys to see, I, got, I need entertainment, too. You know what I'm saying? I, I need to... Have you guys keep me entertained while I do this? Because, again, usually I'm watching TV at this point. And do you guys have any questions so far about what I'm doing? Is any of this foreign to you guys? Can I help clarify any questions that you guys might have? Upstate New York. That's what's up. Do we make any drift cars? We actually do have um, two drift cars that we offer, which is the Thunder Drift and the uh, Lightning. Um, they are they have been in our stable for quite some time, um, but that is all that we offer at this time. Again, I, I appreciate the suggestion because. As always, we can always add to the you know list of add to the list of cool stuff that we want to build here. You know? So, as you guys uh, can tell, where are we at? We're about twenty minutes in. I got the whole back half separated. So now we'll work our contours again that we already started, and uh, we'll keep it going, guys. Chi Town, Chicago, Manny, what's good? MOA rigs again. You know, I uh, I thought about that. I actually uh, we mentioned that we bounced that idea around a little bit. 
Um, I noticed that in a lot of places, the MOA, the motor over axle competition trucks are starting to really make their way back. And uh, that has me excited because that was my intro to the crawling scene was MOA style. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So as you guys can see here, perfect example, as I was scoring it, you guys can see there, I'm just gonna pull and it literally rips the Lexan on the line that I was doing. Oh, the Bronx is in the house. Oh, I love it, bro. I love it. Much love. Uh, Jesse, you're coming a little late to the show. Uh, the reason we're cutting this up is because we are, as the title shows, uh, highlighting how to make your 64 a convertible. I've had quite a bit of people ask uh, on the page that we have, the low ride, our, uh, Red Cat Lowrider page, and I just wanted to help out a couple folks, show them how it's done. It's not a big deal. Um, so that they themselves can feel comfortable doing so. The cool thing is, is let's say that you guys do mess this body up for some reason, okay? If that happens, no problem. You guys can just buy another body, and now you guys can paint it any color you actually want. If blue or red was not your ideal color in life, but it's what we offered and it was a 64, then you have that option to, you know, make it your own. score this and again when you get to those nice flat straight lines those are the ones I usually concentrate on the most I don't concentrate so much on the the contour I concentrate on the straight ones that I can always make because the contour ones are the it's like the detail work it's the stuff you come back to later on Albert Vasquez, what's going on, brother? Jesse Hernandez, Dallas, Texas, much love. Dumboy OG, much love. Thank you for that, bro. Do we have any crawlers in the house? Any of you guys uh, into the scaling scene and dabble in both avenues, or are you strictly in the lowrider scene? As I'm doing that, guys, it's literally flaking that's coming off from the plastic, and that's just the blade doing its work, cutting deeper and deeper into the Lexan. And that's one thing I will say this, that uh, this body is a nice quality Lexan body. It's not a flimsy body. Scalar's not crawling. <laughs> Here's a little trick that I like to use, guys. Now that I have that line scored, I literally am gonna put my finger here and my index finger there, and I'm just going to bend it. And as I bend it, usually what ends up happening, I end up being able to weaken the plastic, and it usually can snap. That one's not ready yet, but you can see how scoring it will weaken it more and more. Like that. Boom. There it is. There we go. Let's see if I can maybe pop that. See, you're squeezing, and there it is. See that? When you've worked with Lexan for as many years as a lot of guys that have been in the hobby and even myself, you kind of tend to know where you can manipulate the plastic and where you can't. There's been a lot of times where I'm doing a body and I'm just getting ready to paint it or I just painted it. And even, you know, after years and years of, you know, cutting up Lexan bodies, I'm trusted in the Lexan too much and I end up ripping it or tearing it. 
you can't come back from that. So don't get overzealous. Take your time with it. The only reason why I would go fast in this situation right now is mainly more for your purpose so that I can give you guys the most I can within the time frame that we have the show going. So now I can stick my finger in there, my fingers separate a little bit, and now I can kind of grab it a little bit better so that I can get that corner. And using the flat end of the blade, I'm just gonna work that line that I originally had up there at the beginning. And sometimes you do that. See, you make little lines like that that you might not be able to see too well, but it happens. As long as it's on the right side of the line, you're good. So let's get over to this side. And continue scoring. And as I mentioned, straight line. Do them first. There's some folks that I know that when they do their bodies, they like to use a ruler and a couple of little of those Harbor Freight clamps to score a straight line. Especially when you're doing like the bottom sections of a new body. I am like the king of winging it. <laughs> it's not a good thing. I do not recommend doing what I do, but um, yeah, I've winged it immense amount of, an immense amount of times and it's more than likely, at least 90% of the time, has been okay, but again, when you're dealing with, you know, a hundred dollar body like like this Impala usually is, you definitely want to just take your time with it. Sorry, guys, I'm reading a couple comments. Just keeping up. Custom airbrush art would be awesome. Yeah, totally. I agree with you there. Gen 7 is my raw color. Very nice. And again, guys, as I mentioned, you're not, your lines are not going to be perfect. But if you take your time, you'll minimize the amount of cleanup that you'll have to do with a a little bit of sandpaper and a straight edge or sandpaper and a little piece of wood. So like again, swapping from blade to blade, sometimes you can get your point across with a different blade that the other one was just not doing. And keep in mind too, a couple of the blades that are out there, they're all different, right? Some of them are a little bit different thickness, and it happens. Let's see if I can manipulate that. There we go. So it's like I did, I squeezed, and now you can see my fingers are poking through there. Taking the blade back again. I'm hugging it on my body, and steady hand. Now that that straight edge is done, I can concentrate on the contour itself. Again, we just, we're just trying to weaken the structure of the Lexan. There it is. So you just squeeze, squeeze, pop. So now you guys can see separation starting to happen. The back half is done. The troublesome area is going to be the corner. That is going to be your detail work. That's where you want to take your time or maybe even clean it up with some scissors. So get your scissors and just, again, allow them to work around the chrome trim there. Boom. Now 
<coughs> and then some of these scissors too, guys, um, they do sell a couple different kinds. They have some that have uh, are straight. This one has a slight uh, taper to them, and then there's some that have a real gnarly taper. Uh, always recommend getting a good set of these. They will last you a long time. Don't try to cut things other than Lexan with them. They will get destroyed really easily that way. I've had my fair share of them, and thinking, oh, I'll cut this really quick, and um, yeah, it was not the business. So just the corner. You guys can see there, I'm just cutting around the chrome trim. And that's that, that's there. So now we can start working on the the top. We've already scored it a bunch of times. I'm gonna see if I can manipulate it by putting my fingers there, top of my index fingers here, and then allowing it to see if I can make it fold the windows out. And then I'm just going to flex it. I wanna see if I can get you guys a right angle here. Sorry guys. So it's getting weak, it's almost there. We're gonna take the blade again. It's just not there yet, so we're gonna just score it a few more times. <laughs> this is more pleasing than ripping off an old scab. <laughs> Much love, Ivy. You know, you get, oh yeah, you got it, Dan. Man, we we'll definitely uh, announce it if we whenever we get sales. Um, we've been very big on you know the, the ads, and I know you guys have seen a lot of our ads for the 64 out. There's a lot of confusion because a lot of folks think that we are trying to scam people, and we're not. We're we pay for those ads, but unfortunately, due to some people in other parts of the world deciding to mimic our stuff, thinking that they can buy a 64 for 60 bucks lose a lot of people you know kind of asking questions so I'm gonna do it one more time guys now that I got the corner piece done see if I can flex and as you go back and forth you can see my finger now coming through and there it is look at that just keep working it working it working it nothing to it I'm going to allow the body to fall in while I work it. And this is the part where you gotta be careful. This is the most crucial part because here if you get too comfortable, you will end up ripping. You don't want it to rip. So work it a little bit, move it back and forth, take a look at where you're at as far as the point of contact, the contact patch itself that is still attached. And if it looks like it's not there, then again, that's what we got these for. That's what we got these for. I know I can just remove it easily, but because of that, I'm just gonna use the scissors just to show you guys. And because the contour shape is this way, I'm going to use the scissors to match the, that contour. I'm just gonna work. There it is. And there's the top. Um, if you do a good enough job, you can keep the top. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to put it on, but who knows if maybe someone can make a 3D printed piece that you guys can glue on the inside as a holder for the top and your hard top can sit in the box as needed. There's your setup right there, the body. Um, I'll show you guys really quick. Um, I'm gonna take the interior off of mine to show you guys what I mean by just double sticky taping it in. So, as you guys can see, I don't use the mounts on the actual car itself. I remove the mounts on the fix of the car. So, when you take your body off, it comes off all together. So, Let's change views here really quick and we'll do a quick recap, guys. So, there you have it. Um, took us probably a solid 30 minutes, 40 minutes maybe. Um, 
I'm sure you guys are timing me. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That's the body. Uh, it's all cut up. It's open now uh, for you to use as a convertible. If you wanted to cut the windows out, no big deal. Take your blade, just like you saw me do already. Score the bottom of it. If you guys like to keep the back windows intact and leave those open, again, no big deal. Using Lexan scissors, you can cut straight down. If you're like me, I like using an exact blade because it really does give you guys nice straight lines. I mean, they're not jagged. I know that if you look close enough, you'll see a little bit of fraying there, but nothing that you can't fix with, again, some sandpaper. Let me swap. So, again, you know, yeah, there is some fraying that happens. I usually like to get a little bit of sandpaper, wrap it around a piece of small wood or something. Um, Michael's, um, what is it, uh, Hobby Lobby, they sell these cool little setups with sandpaper on them in a plastic thing and you put between your fingers and you can just work it so you can get rid of any of the rough edges that you have left. That's a great trick, not just for this car, but for a lot of Lexan bodies when you're trying to customize any kind of car, whether it be one of our Gen 8 crawlers or a lowrider or you know anything in general that you put uh, an aftermarket body uh, or a clear body in general that does not come pre-cut. Most Lexan bodies that you end up buying don't come pre-cut, so you have to actually do all the cutting yourself. Um, that's why I do appreciate that we offer them with clean cuts, but you want to make sure that that carries on to everything else that you do in the car itself. So let me see here. The wheel bearing. Yep, yep, absolutely, Jordan. There's a lot of scams out there, brother. So guys, um, I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, it's one that I was looking forward to for quite some time, um, and I hope that this helps a lot of you guys that were a little nervous about doing so just pick up a knife and start doing it. So, um, you know, with that said, much love to all of you guys. I appreciate you guys spending the day with me or that last hour with me and hanging out. And if you guys uh, want to come back for the next one, don't hesitate. We'll see what we can come up with next. If you guys got suggestions, uh, recommendations for an upcoming show that you guys want me to highlight, feel free to drop us a couple, you know, uh, suggestions. We may, we may not use them, but Hey, we always love adding things to the hat. So, uh, again, much love from all of us here at Red Cat. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate you guys' support, and we really do enjoy seeing the pictures that you guys share. So keep them coming. Keep the great comments coming, and make sure you guys are keeping it positive. Much love, and we hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Take care.